Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in Vertical Projectile Motion. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at an exam type question, which is actually one big question broken up into four smaller sections. And I suggest you go through this nice and slowly. Maybe go through it the first time and watch the lesson, and then maybe the second time go through it and try and do the question by yourself without looking at the solution, and then only look at the solutions at the end, because that's the only way that you will learn. So let's look at this example. It says, a stationary rocket on the ground is launched vertically upwards. After four seconds, the rocket's fuel is used up and it is 225.6 meters above the ground. At this instant, the velocity of the rocket is 112.8 meters per second. The diagram below shows a path followed by the rocket. Ignore the effects of air friction, which is awesome. Ignore air friction. Assuming that G does not change during the entire motion of the rocket. It'd be very interesting if it worked, changed a bit. Now it says, at which point P or Q is the rocket in free fall? Okay, so let's look at our little diagram. So he has a rocket and it's there's the path that it travels. It goes up past P, past Q, and reaches a maximum height with a velocity zero, and then it falls back down to the ground. Okay, and at this point here, which is at, what did they say, four seconds, four seconds, the velocity is 112.8 meters per second, and the height that it is at is 225.6 meters. So do you agree at P, the engines, the rockets still busy going up, okay, the rockets engines are still working at point P, but at this point here, this line across here, the fuel has been used up. So the only force acting on the rocket at this point Q is the force of gravity. So the answer is Q. Q is when the rocket is in free fall. Okay, right, let's look at the next question. The next question reads, write down the direction of acceleration at point P and point Q. So now we've just discussed the fact that at P, the rocket's engines are still working and it is traveling upwards. And then suddenly at this point here, where at the horizontal line, here is where the fuel is used up. And all the way from here, all the way through, the rocket is in free fall. And when it is in free fall, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity. So therefore we can say that, well, the acceleration direction at point P has to be upwards because at that point, we have the force of the engines pushing it up. But over here at point Q, and also it's speeding up, it's going from a zero velocity to a velocity of 112.8. So therefore, it is speeding up. But at point Q, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity, which is downwards. So therefore, the direction of the acceleration at point Q is downwards. So at point P, it is upwards. And at point Q, it is downwards. OK, that is the direction of the acceleration. Now let's look at the next part of the question. It says taking upward as positive. So taking the upward motion as positive. So upward motion is positive. Use equations of motion. So now you cannot use any other method except equations of motion to calculate the time taken from the moment the rocket is launched until it strikes the ground. Okay, now normally this seems like a very easy question because it's just what a time what takes what time it takes to get up is equal to what time it takes to get down. However, what is happening is there are two different types of motion. From year to year, the rocket is under power. So therefore, it's going to take a different amount of time than from there to there. Okay, so from year to year, and then the rocket is going to travel along and then it's going to travel all the way down. Okay, so there are two different motions here. There's the first one here and then there is a second one which is when it's under free fall. Okay, so we need to work this out 
in two different parts and then work out, add them together. Okay, so let's look at the first section. The first section, we do not know the initial velocity of the rocket. The displacement, however, up to this point here, this line here, is 225,6 meters. The final velocity at that point is 112,8, and we know the change in time is 4 seconds. And we want the time it took in total, so we don't actually have to work that bit out. We know that it's 4 seconds. But what do we need to know? We now need to work out the green bit because we need to work out how long it took to get from this point here where the line is crossing, where the engines ran out of fuel, all the way back down to the ground. So that point there may be the final velocity of the blue, but it's also the initial velocity at this point. So therefore we know that VI of the green is also 112,8. Okay, so let's think about this. We've got VI is 112,8. We've got the acceleration due to gravity is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared, but it's going to be downwards. And since we've chosen up as positive, since we've chosen up as positive, this is negative 9.8. We have a displacement, a delta x, is this distance from, remember distance is how far you are from where you started, so therefore this displacement here is 225.6 meters, but we are starting below, we are ending below where we started, so therefore we are, have a negative displacement of 225,6. And we want to know the time, okay? And we don't have the final velocity. And if you told me the final velocity was zero, I'd be very upset because it then cannot hit the ground if the final velocity is zero. Okay, if the final velocity is zero, it would just hover above the ground. So let's go through our equations of motion. Let's go through them. We've got Vf equals Vi plus A delta T. Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2A delta x. We've got delta x is equal to Vi delta t plus a half A delta t squared. And we've got delta x is equal to Vf plus Vi over 2 times by delta t. So we want an equation which uses vi a delta x and we work out t. So there's vi a delta x and t. So I'm going to use this equation here. Now there are easier ways to do this in which we could use this information and maybe work, maybe use this to work out the final velocity and then use something like this to work out the time. But I'm going to do this one simply so that I can show you how you can do it even if it's a trinomial. So let's go through this. We have got delta x, let's write it down, we've got delta x is equal to vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared. Okay, the initial velocity, okay, first of all, the displacement is minus 225,6 is equal to the initial velocity of 112,8 times by t plus a half times by minus 9.8 t squared. So that becomes minus 225,6 is equal to 112,8 t minus 4.9 t squared. So now we need to rearrange this. So I'm going to rearrange it on the right hand side here, but I'm going to change color so you can see where I'm writing. So it becomes 4,9 t squared minus 112,8 t minus 225,6 equals zero. And now the way we want to solve this is we actually need to use the formula. 
And the formula says x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now grade 12, this dude here is given to you on the maths formula sheet, but it's not given to you on the science formula sheet. So you need to know this formula so that you can solve your trinomials like this. Okay, so let's work it out. In this case, instead of x, we've got t. So we're going to say t is equal to 112,8 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is 112,8 squared minus 4 times by 4.9 times by 225,6, and I've run out of space, all over 2 times 4,9. Okay, and then we're going to have to put it in our calculators. So here we go. We're going to do, we're gonna, first we're going to do the square root part. So we're going to go 112,8 plus or minus, so we've got 112.8 squared minus 4 times 4.9 times negative 225.6 bracket equals, and that is, and then we're going to square root that, and it becomes 130,94 all over 9.8 and now as you know with quadratics we're going to end up with two answers now if we go 112.8 minus 130 we're going to end up with a negative answer and time cannot be a negative we can't go backwards in time as much as we sometimes want to so therefore we're only going to look at the positive ones so therefore the time for this is going to be plus 112.8 divided by 9.8 and it works out to be 24,87 seconds. So what have we just worked out here? We've actually worked out the time it took to go from this point all the way down to the bottom. So we've worked out the time it took to go through free fall. But the question was, we calculate the time taken from the moment the rocket is launched until it strikes the ground. So therefore we need to add this four seconds to it. So we add the four seconds and we end up with 28,87 seconds. Okay, so now we know exactly what is going on. Right, now let's do the next part of this question, the final part. So on this final part of the question, we are asked to sketch a velocity versus time graph for the motion of the rocket from the moment it runs out of fuel until it strikes the ground. It says take the time when the rocket runs out of fuel as time t equals zero. So before we used to say t was four, now we're saying that t equals zero at this point here. Okay, and we are drawing a velocity versus time graph for this motion. Okay, for the point when it is under the force of gravity is under free fall. And it says indicate the following values on the graph, the velocity that the rocket or the rocket when it runs out of fuel, and the time at which the rocket strikes the ground. Okay, so we know that we have to choose up as positive because the previous section they told us that up was as positive. So you can't change it. If they tell you to choose up as positive, you have to choose up as positive. So here is my graph. Okay, and this is your velocity in meters per second, and this is your time in seconds. Now, remember we chose upwards as positive, okay? So at this point where t equals zero, the velocity of the rocket is 112.8 meters per second, which means that we should be starting our graph at 112.8. And that is one of the requirements they asked us to do. They asked us to write down the velocity of the rocket when it runs out of fuel. Okay, now listen, grade 12, let me just say one thing. This graph here is very rough because I cannot use a ruler in the system. There is no ruler for me to use, okay? There's no way for me to straighten out these lines. You guys need to use rulers in the tests and in the exams. You'll be marked down for untidiness if you do not use a ruler. Okay, now it says the time at which the rocket strikes the ground. So let's think about this. Yeah, from this point onwards, the 
rocket is in free fall and the only force acting onto the force of gravity, the only force acting onto the force of gravity, so therefore the acceleration is negative, which means that the gradient of this graph is negative and it's a straight line graph, so because acceleration is constant. So there we go. Now this point here is actually equal to this point here, remember, because if the velocity is zero, that's its turning point. And this point here, very roughly drawn, not to scale, is the point where it hits the ground, where it hits the ground, okay? And we have worked out that the total time it took to go from here to here, from all the way from the ground, back down to the ground is 28.87 meters per, eight, what, 28.87 seconds, but that included these four seconds here. So therefore the time it took to get from here all the way down to there, in other words, from the time the rocket stopped going when the time it was in free fall was actually 24,87 seconds. And you don't write the seconds in there. And that is how you draw your graph. Please make sure that you make sure you do the requirements, okay, that they will ask you to do every time. Okay, and that's it, grade 12s. Please go check how to do these, make sure you understand, and then go do the questions, questions in the assessment. Have a great day.